Share my screen for the first topic. Yes, they got it. Just what All right, so it might be a little bit small, but I'm gonna read it right. So this was a a message this simp, I mean this dad sent to his his son before his first date. So it reads this right: I want you home absolutely no later than seven thirty. Public places only. No homes. No private bathrooms. No nakedness. Comport yourself as a gentleman, respectful and polite. Open doors, offer to pay for everything. Listen way, way more than you speak. She's the boss. <laughs> She's, you're simply honored she chose to spend time with your goofy ass. Your job is to be chivalrous, courteous, and kind while simultaneously being protective and strong. You're a man, but moreover, you're my son. Conduct yourself accordingly. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. So, so that was what he sent his son for his first date. Listen, way, way more than you speak. She's the boss. You're simply honored she chose your goofy ass, right? So, my first question is this Why is it taught? Or why should, why are, why are so many young men taught that? Or women believe that? They should be put on a pedestal or why should a woman be treated as though she's a man's world and then you can um rope in this 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 advice that uh this father gave his son we'll start with master Corey. uh well first off that advice was trash oh, <laughs> <laughs> that text message was trash hopefully the kids i mean some, so there was a couple you know valid points in there <laughs> about opening some doors um but the most 90 percent of that text message was trash <laughs> um <laughs> like I, I don't, you know he made it seem like uh, you know like she's doing the son a favor going out with him you know it ain't it, it ain't it ain't supposed to be like that um yeah so yeah i don't know 90 percent of that she was trash hopefully the son didn't listen to it and did his own thing. <laughs> All right. Who hurt you? And nobody hurt me. It was just a lot of. It was a lot of. So what in particular did you feel like was was trash? You said ninety eight percent. So you said you agreed with the opening the doors. Yeah, what part? Be, he he uh, don't he don't even agree with that. I, I might not even agree with that. Good point. Uh, is it cold outside? Then you know, get to your door, and open it yourself. Um, like, but <laughs> nah, stuff like um. You know, listen more than you talk. Hey, man, if you got something to say, say it. You ain't you. You're not there just to you know for her to bounce her thoughts off of you. You know, if you got ideas and thoughts, speak up. Um, the pay for everything, no matter what. You ain't got to do that. Uh, like, ain't no rule saying you got to do that. Uh, if y'all decide, you know, to split the finances some other sort of way that makes better sense for y'all, you could do that too. Um, what else was in there? She like she doing you a favor going out with your goofy ass. No, you doing her a favor going out with her goofy ass. You know what I'm saying? You plan on reproducing? Hmm? You plan on reproducing? Well, I'm thinking about it. The more I hang around kids, the less I want to reproduce. But we'll see how it goes. But I'm gonna give my son good advice. Not this. <laughs> so, who, who next? Yeah. So as the newbie here, I just want to understand like your age. Are you married? Do you Clearly, you don't have kids. I don't have kids. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm 41. I am uh, recently married um, for about 90 days at this point. Um, so now I don't have kids. Okay. So, who? What's your take? Now you can address Master Corey, or or you can you know give your your take on this. You know, obviously, the father is right in line with. You know, you put women on the pedestal. You give her the world. You honored so on and so forth. What you think? Um, I mean, I think the advice was was sound. I think the whole point of the message that he was trying to get is to be a gentleman, right? Like you don't want to go out there and, and and be a dickhead on the first date. So what Corey was saying is like, no, you don't pay for everything on the first date. Um, if he if the son was the one that was pursuing the girl, which I would assume that that was the case. I mean, as a guy, you probably if you're asking somebody to go out, you should 
be taking on that responsibility to paying for it. That's just the way that it goes. Um, if you don't want to do that, or if you feel like that's not, Corey's making this face, but I mean, if that's not your thing. Yeah. You said he's pursuing her. We're not pursuing, we both pursuing each other. We're trying to get to know each other. You know, so, on the first, so what you're saying is that on, first the first date. Date, on the first date, you prefer to go Dutch. I'm saying we we both getting to know each other. So it's you know, if everything else can be 50-50, why can't finances be 50-50? Why is that the yeah, only I mean thing that you're talking about 100 percent my way? Yeah, you're talking I think what you're talking about is later on in at, being an adult. But on the first date, it could be first day too. We could spend okay. the first day. We can't, I ain't saying we have to, but to to put like a hard rule in place, like no, no matter what, it's your response, it ain't my responsibility. I can't. It's not. It's not a responsibility, but it is a kind gesture. Uh, it is the manly thing to do, right? If you're if you're a person that oh, follows, what, what man made that if you're mean? if you're a person that follows to just tradition. So if you you know, it depends. If you're following the traditional standards, which is what this father is following, then the man should take care of the the at least the first thing. I don't know who made them rules. I just do what makes sense. I don't. I don't know what man made that man rule. So I don't find that. I hear I you. So you got to do what's best for you. But I'm saying as a person that has three sons, I would I would certainly, you know, I would tell them, like, listen, open the door. That That's fine. That's that's give or take. You're definitely not going to leave no woman pumping the gas. That's where I draw the line. Everybody knows that. Like, if he goes up to the gas station, if you're not the driver, let's say this is a young man, let's say he's 17. Right. Maybe he doesn't have the car to go up driving. Don't let that girl get away from the class. Those are just things. Those are common courtesy. That's not even about whether it's dating or pursuing anybody else. Those are common courtesy, minimum standards. And so, you know, Corey, if you don't have that, that's fine. Um, but these are just common. These are just common, common courtesy things, right? So the other thing that he said, now I don't agree with... Um, it's a privilege to for her to go out with your goofy ass because what that's saying is that the son doesn't have any value, right? right. So he, he's implying that the son doesn't have any value and just be happy that somebody wants you. So I'm never going to tell my son, be happy that somebody is choosing you because he also has value to bring to, to any situation that he's coming in. So I don't necessarily agree with that, but everything else was, was, was okay. How about, um, she's the boss, but also, on top of speaking to boss, because you see you just are referred back to like what used to be, right? The standards that were set. Women weren't the boss, right? In those instances from back in the day. But one thing you mentioned was so what if she invited him out? Would she then be obligated to pay for everything? It wouldn't be an obligation, no. I, I mean, I personally am never gonna pay for anybody on a first date. That's Would just don't, don't invite me. To do though? I'm sorry. Would it be the womanly thing to do? No, that's not a womanly thing to do. <laughs> that's a manly thing to do. <laughs> and I'm not a man, <laughs> right? Damn. So that that's that's not a womanly thing to do. That's a manly thing to do. And because like I that, like, I don't exude do masculine tendencies, I'm not paying for a man. Now there's women that do that, and touche to them. But I'm not coming out of my purse for for anybody. You, if that's the case, I go with my girlfriend. Out, is pulling your card out your wallet is somehow masculine. I don't have a problem paying for dates for a relationship that I'm in. That's not what I'm saying. But on a first date where we're getting to know each other, that's my that's that's my financial responsibility. Right. I'm not I'm not paying for the date, and that and that's my choice. I'm not going to go out with anybody that doesn't kind of align with with my line of thinking. So if that's you, that's fine. Then the then this date ain't for you. So Caddy, just to, just to kind of pivot, not pivot, but piggyback off of some of the things Tamora said. So because one thing she indicated was he invited her, he should pay. Right. That's one thing that was said. She clarified it a little bit. But what if you invited a man out? Would you then feel obligated to pay? Well, I'm not inviting no man out anywhere, so <laughs> that's not even relevant to me. <laughs> However, um, you know, I, I think, you know, do whatever works for you. For me, again, I would not invite a man out, um, so therefore I would not feel expected to pay or feel like I, I'm obligated to pay. No one's obligated to pay anything. Um, I think where I differ, though, is 
when you're dating, you're you're dating to get to know someone, and that should be reciprocated. That energy. So I feel like everything should be reciprocated in that space. Um, so I have no problem with paying for dates as we're dating. Uh, right. but the first date, I feel like that that sets the intention, and I feel like as a man, you want to set that intention where you're interested in me. You want to solidly show that, and. I mean, move accordingly. That's all I'm saying. Like, we ain't going Dutch. I can go Dutch with my homegirls. I can go. So what What are you doing to show that you're interested in me? I'm going out and it's oh. date. Oh, got you. All right. Participation. So, yeah, I was like, you like, agree? Oh. And I'm it's sorry, it, I didn't get your name. You're showing up. That's your Patty. Okay. So, do you agree? Like, so the first date, but let's say the second, first date went well. Second date comes around and you guys are talking. And you say, hey, you know, there's this concert coming up. I'm going to grab the tickets. Would you like to go? Would you be OK with paying for the tickets? Yeah. Yeah. Because at that point, I'm offering. Because you've already you've already established some kind of boundary. So I think that we're in agreement, at least us two women, that for the first date, it just yeah. should be the man's responsibility. Moving forward, I don't think any, at, at least you or I, are disagreeing with that. We wouldn't pay for dates moving forward. Not all of them. But just a show of appreciation. You know what? I enjoy right. your company. I don't mind paying for the tickets. I'm gonna pay for the tickets. But then you, you know, you probably expect them to pay for the rest of the night. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I mean, you have no problem, and and it's not about not coming out of your your pocket or not being willing to chip in once the dating starts. But this particular scenario or explanation uh, example was going on a first date. Right, right. So I don't even know why Corey was talking about finances because so we're not wait, even that deep. Wait, yet. So yeah, the, the dating starts on the first date, right? So I'm trying to understand. No, that's, that's an interview. That's an interview. That's I no mean, date. That is true. That's an interview. That's a date. It's, 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 an, it's an initial date, but it's it's really an assessment period. Okay, do I really want to date you? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, the name of the first date to not a date is a date. No, I mean it is a date, but it re you're not dating, is what I'm you're saying. Like, you go out on a first yeah. date, you're not dating. You're going out on a date. So, so, you're right, so because it isn't plural till more than one happens, right? When there are multiple date. reoccurrences, then you're in the dating phase. I need help with the logic behind this. So, uh, Tamora and Caddy, you both said you'd be fine paying for a second date but just that first date is just like for some reason to go so what happened like what happens between the first and the second date that makes paying acceptable hmm. so by the by the time the second date comes around you know that okay well you know what? i enjoy this person's company i want to it's almost a token of appreciation for the first date and that going through successfully Oh, so so you so basically it's not, you don't want to waste your money on the first day if it goes. So back. it has it has nothing to do with wasting money. It it becomes a point of I just want to see where this guy's head is. I want to understand that he's willing to, that he's a person that's going to take care of a woman, not not financially, but a person that has um exactly what the father was explaining, just gentleman like qualities. <laughs> And a part of that is paying for the first date. All right. All right. Um, so, Sean, women should be, you know, based on what the father said, she's the boss. You should be honored that she chose you to go out with, with your goofy ass. Should women indeed be put on the pedestal? Your thoughts? No. Um, no, I, I don't believe that there's a pedestalization that's supposed to take place of women or women supposed to, a woman supposed to be your world. You know, that'd, be, that'd be difficult to put a woman on a pedestal and still take care of your life and be successful and move forward to be the best man you could be. Um, I think that in what Caddy and Tamora were saying in a traditional sense, yeah, that may have been the case, but we don't live in traditional times anymore. And I think if you have to adapt and move on with being progressive that comes with making yourself just as valuable or even more valuable because you probably bring more to the table than a, a young lady you're dating on a first date or something like that. Well, you're saying because of the progressive times, it seems like everybody's kind of equally yoked at the table now? No, I wouldn't say equally yoked. Okay. Uh, I have a son. I would tell him that he's the prize. That he oh, is, so uh, he, so this gonna be the generation that uh <laughs> continues there you to go, that what 
<laughs> we're oh, the rules. Like a programming <laughs> young men and young boys to feel like they're the prize. So therefore they no longer need to pursue women. No, 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 the two don't coincide to say that a man should feel like he's the prize and he shouldn't pursue a woman that they don't coincide that those don't correlate to me. You should still feel like you're the prize and be in pursuit of the woman you want, but that doesn't short change yourself. Okay, but you know that's conflicting with with the narrative tied to a man being the prize, meaning women should be attracted to you, be attracted to whatever commodities you have, finances, um, assets, whatever that may be, and therefore we should show how we can bring value to your life versus you bringing value into our lives. So but that's what I'm trying to understand. Is that what like? But isn't about? that the isn't that the case as it is anyway? Like women are attracted to men for their commodities. Uh, women mm -hmm. are attracted to men for for the fundamental things that a man can provide, which is like commodities. Sex. It's okay. Well, let's define commodities, though. Mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure that nothing's conflated here. Like you're you're not lumping in a whole bunch of nonsense. And I'm so, just like, going up what you said. If if you're saying that men are valuing themselves as the prize, but and women they don't pursue women because of that, I don't agree with that. Um, I think you could consider yourself a prize. It's like a woman considers herself a prize. That's a, that doesn't shortchange what she brings to the table. Okay, she feels well, like she's the you prize. know, I I think I agree with you. I think that I think that we're getting hung up on the word prize, right? So I 100% agree that if I'm sending my sons out on a date, I want them to feel like they are a person of value. And so, and if if this girl that you're pursuing or this girl that you're dating doesn't see the value in you, you need to go. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think for so long, um, Hamp, you put, I, you had a, a something that you put online and it was just too much for me to reply to it uh, the other day about men just not feeling, um, not being, a, we know that men are supposed to do certain things, right? But just an appreciation, a token of appreciation, right? We don't, men no longer want to feel like they're taken advantage of. They also want to feel valued. And most of the time, based on traditional standards, they didn't have that love or value tied into that. So I understand what you're saying about your son being the, the prize. You just want him to feel valued. Is that what you mean by prize? No, I want him to feel like he's the prize. <laughs> so that's, that's, what I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think I think those are two separate um two separate <laughs> things right there, the prize and, and value. We can show and teach our kids how to value themselves and how to not allow anyone to uh, decrease their value. Um, but, you know, seeing yourself as a prize, I think that that's different. And to me, the, the, the younger generation coming up now, young men feeling as if they're the prize, that equates to them feeling as if they no longer have to pursue women because why should they? They're the they're the gift. Therefore, the well, I mean, I'm but, I'm but if you think about I'm it, men confused. men traditionally are the prize. I mean, if you think about single women, right? They're single women, and most of, there's a there's like a bunch of single women. And they go after the man that has the most, so they are the prize. You're waiting for a man to choose you to be married. So ultimately, yeah. the men are the prize. I, I don't agree with that, but I, I mean, I, hear you. <laughs> I mean, but the, we don't like to say it as women, but yeah. that ultimately, the man is the prize. That doesn't. I mean, yeah, women, both both men and women can be. I guess if you want to use the word prize, you both should have something to give. Right, right, right. I, I just I, that that terminology. If you get if you get hooked up, if you get if you're just getting hooked up on the word prize, like oh, yeah. who was. Well, the trophy. Scary. If, if, men, if men have traditionally been considered the prize, and I'm feeling broke, E and J by All right, yeah. <laughs> so um, what the hell was that? Huh? <laughs> that's made people be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just want to clarify a little bit about prize, right? I think that men do control the access to like the relationship aspect right i think sex is often controlled by women but like marriage we propose right even relationships we choose when relationships actually come to fruition um by and large of course there's some outliers right but i think sex is controlled by women 
And then relationships are probably controlled by men. If, and then if women want relationships and men ch- control the access to them, well, that probably would be the prize that Sean is alluding to. Um, and we can comment on that in just a second. So Q, what do you think about she's the boss, your goofy ass, should women be put on a pedestal? No, I think that I think that this father in this particular scenario is turning his son into a little bitch. Like that is so fucking disrespectful because like at the end of the day, <laughs> she's not the boss. Who the fuck says she's the boss? You know what I'm saying? That's first off. I agree with that. Because when you when you even think about that terminology, now you're talking about a hierarchy. So the son has no other choice but to fall under her, which no longer makes him the prize, which also also devalues him. I feel so it'd be yeah. like the girl, it'd be like the girl going on a date and somebody telling her, be lucky that he chose you because he's the boss. Now exactly. you're the hierarchy. Uh so I don't know what the fuck this father was on. That's some bullshit. Um, and then as far as like uh, she, he's he's lucky that she chose him. I could kind of see parts of that. However, I just think the wording was flawed for me personally. Um, and what I mean by that is kind of like what Hamp was just saying. The women choose, like I believe the woman chooses uh, because he could like her all day, but until, in order to get on that date, she has to choose him. Now, ultimately, when it comes to marriage and that sort of thing, yes, the, the guy chooses and he right. has to be the one to propose. Uh, but in, in that initial and in that beginning part, the dating phase, the woman is the one who chooses. So I could kind of see if he said that wording, it would make sense. But the way that he worded it just kind of turned his son into a little bitch. And I feel like for me being a boy mom, um, I believe that women should raise their sons to be used to take you to get used to take being taken care of like and, to, and taken out on dates and things like that like i think it should be normalized that at least once a month moms should take their sons on dates so that they don't feel awkward about going out with a woman and having somebody pay for them because that shows that she cares about you too but that's just me i like that idea q yes. Yeah, I agree with taking your sons out for the exposure of how to conduct yourself in uh, restaurants and how to sit across, you know, from a woman, how to have conversation at a table, those kind of things. I 100% agree with making it a standard that a woman is going to take care of you. Not so much. Not necessarily like take care of, but like in an enabling way, but like. I think the way society has things structured now, like if a guy gets taken out on a date by his woman, he's he's conditioned to feel awkward about that. Like he's supposed to overcompensate or do more when he should be able to just receive that. So that's what yeah. I mean by that. Yeah, I, I see that um, with a lot of men when they receive something like a gift or um, something like where a woman pays for the for the date there's this sense of awkwardness that happens. And that comes from men not feeling appreciated or not experiencing um, someone giving to them. Um, so so I agree with you there, but just make, I, it, it, it's just a fine line of, you know, making sure they don't un- expect women to take care of them, but understanding that they're, they should also, understanding how to reciprocate or how to receive love. Because a lot of men just don't know how to do it. You give a man a birthday gift or you throw a man a birthday party, you know, they just feel so awkward. They feel so awkward and they don't know how to receive that. They don't know how to, but it's, I think, what you, to if you, had, point, if you had showed him love and paid for the first date, he'd know how to receive it better. No. <laughs> no, that, that's, on, that's on your mama. <laughs> that, that's you what you, you I think what Q was saying, what, I think what Q's point was, it was on the mama to teach him, oh. right? So you know how to act. It's just like when a father treats his daughter a certain way, she's not right. in an awkward space when she's in the company of a good, nice guy. Right. 
yeah. because they know how to receive the love and the men don't. So again, the, your point is to parenting. And I agree 100% on that. Yeah. Do you think that her point and anybody can respond? Her point is also just overall conditioning. It is. Conditioning. Yes. Right. But 100%. on parents, right? Because if they're hearing one thing in a household that does have a large influence, what if all their parents are conditioned to say, Oh, you ain't shit. She's the boss, right? Because your peers have a large influence too. So do you think that it's more than just the parents? Anybody can answer. Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of, of everything. It's, it's nature versus nurture. I mean, you know, uh, you're, you're raised by your parents, you leave your parents and you spend more time with your peers um, and your environment. So ultimately that shapes you more um, depending on, on whatever, whatever you're exhibiting. But typically that shapes you more than your parents do. Um, you know, I agree with the, the parenting thing, but I think at a foundation, like ultimately what it boils down to is teaching your kids how to receive love and what good love looks like, because sometimes manipulation can be masked in, in love and, and that's not really love. So, I mean, um, you know, I won't necessarily, I have no kids, but I, I don't believe now that I'll teach my son um, how to be taken care of by a woman um, per se, but I mean, I will teach him what love should look like coming from a woman that loves him, like what, what right. acts of love looks like. Um, and same thing for my daughter. If I have a daughter, like teaching her, well, what does good love look, look like from a man and, and set the standard and, and set your boundaries. Cause I think as adults, that that's what we struggle with is setting boundaries and, and setting standards and real expectations in relationships. I think we have to be careful. I think we have to be careful with the over nurturing of boys, though. And I think there's a fine line to push towards showing your son love as a woman, you know, because it comes differently as a father, right? But showing your son love as a woman and nurturing, but to an extent where he can still maintain a level of uh, masculinity and aggression to to prosper. I mean, it's. As I've seen the other side, you know, we call them names, betas, simps, whatever, but, you know, there are men who I may feel like they were over nurtured, right? So they expect a certain type of treatment from a woman mm -hmm. and they don't go out and get it on their own. You know what I mean? Not, not necessarily like a love, but uh, that feeling like the necessity to have a woman's nurturing as an adult. I agree. Well, I think that goes back to you know, if you come from a healthy foundation within the household, I don't think that's something you would struggle with as a man. And you know, uh, you, you broke up a little bit. Can you say that part of yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah, I think that that goes back to the household. You know, like if you're raised in a healthy environment, I think you have less of a chance of struggling with you know, being a quote unquote beta. I agree. Yeah. Hey Amen. I appreciate the question. So what like no, so hold on. Comes, you can you can save your question for the end. Hey, yeah. right. Right I want to pivot right. a little bit. Hey, that was great takes. Um tomorrow one, Master Corey Zero. I don't know. No, oh, very great. <laughs> yeah. Man. But like, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, and we out.